Today I wanted to talk to you about, as we move into more photography and multimedia, I wanted to talk to you about some of the additional things you can do as far as just lightly tweaking and editing your photographs here. So a couple of things to point out here. Again, I've been saying it throughout the entire semester. You can't fix a bad photograph with something like GIMP, Photoshop, or Lightroom. If your photo is that bad, you're going to need to end up going in and making different edits to it. Now, having said that as well, one of the things to point out to you when you're working with these types of photographs is honestly, we do have some great tools available to us across free software and paid software that can actually make your life a little bit easier. Probably one of the biggest fixes we have to focus on across multiple photos here, and I did grab a few just to demo that I thought could use a little bit of tweaking here, is being able to go in and edit what we call the shadows, the highlights, and the midtones, or tonal control, and also the colors as well. Like for the example here, this is actually a really fun photo. It's well framed, uh, you know, as far as rule of thirds, you have the focus, you have depth of field, you got everything going on here. But if you look really, really closely, it's an overcast day. You can even tell so much as you're seeing some of the water here from the rain coming down on the photo. Now, we can clean this up a little bit, again, using those tonal controls. So as far as GIMP is concerned, I'm going to start with GIMP here and talk you through this a little bit. Under GIMP, the, we kind of control this under colors, the drop down menu, and you have two major options here. You actually have levels and curves. Now, you can also go under exposure and see if maybe you can just tweak exposure versus having to come in and work with the curves as far as the tonal values. However, I can tell already, especially with uh, the girl as far as the skin tone against the white here, you can already tell that the image is a little washed out. The same goes that the oranges aren't that vibrant, nor is the color of the water. So a couple of things that we can do here first is yes, you could if you really wanted to, you could try out exposure. And exposure is just that imagine you're going in and kind of changing how long the graphic or photograph has been exposed. However, if you notice here, it affects the entire photograph. So that's not really what I wanted to do exactly because I want to make certain elements pop as far as my photo is concerned. However, I did want to point out exposure because sometimes, yeah, you can just come in. It's like, oh, you know what? I had bad exposure on that photo. You can clean it up a bit. Normally when you're getting this in depth, yeah, you're starting to get into the options of levels or curves. So let me go ahead and talk about the color levels here. Color levels, we work with three major values. We work with uh, shadows, midtones or grays and highlights or white. Now, this is the part probably that scares folks the most is you see a graph and you're like, nobody told me there would be math. It's not so much math as it is controlling how much of the photograph we are devoting to allowing for things such as blacks or shadows. Where is the set point for the midtones? And notice here you have this huge spike here. It's kind of very thin here, but a little hard to see. That's the white tones or the highlights, which comparatively to the photograph, this makes sense. Not only are you getting those whites directly out of uh, the buoys here, but also to think about the water as well. The water is light enough that you're getting those highlights as far as the design goes. Now there's two ways that you can actually work with adjusting color levels here. Personally, I like to actually come in and tweak as far as the scope of black, gray, and white. Now, that's what, again, that is what GIMP calls it. Um, Photoshop and Lightroom, if I recall correctly, they do call these like shadow, midtones, and highlights. But let me just go ahead and demo here. So I'm going to grab the white here just to show you. And you see what happens when I really start to 
just I'll pull that like all the way down there. So I've completely blown out the photograph because what I'm saying here is as far as the scope of the color levels in this photo accommodate for the highlights. So what I may do actually is kind of come in here and bring this down here. Like that spike is just too much. It's washing out the photo. Now, however, I may sit there and say, okay, I need to come to the shadows now and start to draw that in. Once again, you see if I go to the polar opposite side, you see how it's really just washed out again. So what I could do, however, is I could kind of bring this up a little bit more and notice what I'm trying to do specifically here is give a little more punch, but the wall was so washed out. Like if I go ahead and put this back, you see how washed out that wall is back there? So I'm trying to get some of that depth back as far as the wall is concerned. And again, this can be really, really subtle. And then lastly, you have the midtones that kind of help control the balance between as far as the shadows and the highlights. So notice here, like maybe if I pull this back just a hair, notice how much more punch the graphic has now in comparison. Like I'll turn off the preview here. So you kind of almost had this filmy overlay of overcast and now I've got much more depth. I have a lot more as far as, you know, drawing into the image. The colors are more robust. Um, and it looks a lot more realistic. So now I can go ahead and say, okay. And I now have a much better, you know, more punchier photograph here. At this point, if you wanted to, you can also come in and kind of retweak as far as shadows and highlights are concerned. So maybe if I wanted to pull, see if I can pull up here as far as some of the highlighting is concerned. And this is where photography, even just digital photography, first off, we have so much more control in comparison to back whenever we were dealing with light rooms and stuff like that. But now we have the capabilities that we can really come in here and begin to kind of clean up just simple things as far as our graphics are concerned. So for instance here, taking down the shadow a little bit again, I'm looking here along this edge as far as my image is concerned. So a lot different from that original there. Now, that was using like tonal levels there as far as the graph was concerned. So we were actually using the levels. Another option folks will often use here, and I'll come over to this graphic now of this young lady, is we use curve values. They actually, very similar, they control the same things as far as color and tone. But instead, it's more of a line graph control based on the RGB color values contained in an image. Again, this is not a bad photograph at all. Um, you know, good positioning, good texture, good color pops. We can do maybe just a hair more with this though. Um, honestly, the hair gets a little lost. It looks a little washed out. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is under color, I'm going to come to curves and we'll adjust the curves here. So curves are kind of a little similar to what we were doing previously, though again, once again, a lot of folks say there was going to be no math and oh my gosh, you're showing me a graph now. Same concept here within the backdrop here, what you can see is as far as going from that dark option there, as far as your shadows into the midtones, into the highlights. Once again here, you kind of have that washed out kind of piece there as far as the highlight is concerned. And actually for this one, what I'll do is I'll do split view. And actually I kind of want to go right there so that we can see both sides. Now, if I were to just start bringing this up again, once again, you can see what's happening here. I'm not, I'm declining as far as the amount a shadow that's being allowed in there. Likewise, I come up to the highlights. You see how I'm kind of like burning out the graphic here. 
So a little bit that we do here as far as our curve types is normally what we want to do is we want to kind of pull out those mid-tones and balance it with the highlights here. And this is honestly, in my opinion, this is probably one of the oldest tricks in the book as far as photography goes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of pick a point and I'm going to begin to pull down. Just, and I mean, it's subtle. But then what I'm going to do is come up to where kind of the mid-tone meets the highlight. And let's see, kind of bring that out a little bit there. And I can actually come in. Let's kind of bring this up just a teeny tiny bit, maybe a little bit there. There we go. Now, you don't have to work with just two points. You can also change as far as the overall graphic is concerned. But what this is doing is this is measuring as far as the mid-tones and the highlights and what is available here. So now you can kind of see as far as the graphic goes, you can get a whole new effect a little bit deeper as far as the cheeks are concerned and also the coloring. But also too, you know, you're not really getting that washed out effect here as far as her hair is concerned. You're getting a little bit more vibrance in there. Now again, one of the drawbacks to this is yes, you are working with as far as, uh, you know, the entirety of the graphic. One other thing I want to talk about the color curves, however, is you can come in, you can actually, while we work with the overall value here, which is fine, you can actually also come in and target specific RGB values as well. So for instance, if I come in and say red, you know, maybe I actually want to make, you see how just by moving the red element here, I'm actually just affecting as far as her hair is concerned. So for sake of argument, if I really wanted to make the hair a lot more brighter, I can do so. And maybe, you know, kind of actually take this down just a little bit as far as getting that highlight is concerned. So there's a lot of options as far as curves and levels that you can do. And again, like I pulled this image as well. When you're working with curves, honestly, just even doing a real quick kind of curve tweak here can just add that little bit of extra brilliance to your photograph. Notice the beak becomes more, uh, you know, colorful. The whites become more white. Uh, they stand out more. So you've got some options there. So this is just in GIMP by itself. And again, that's one of the nice things with GIMP and Photoshop that you do have these options, but it's not a matter that's the only thing the software package can do. It does have a lot of other options, but when it comes to the scope of this course, really just working with the color drop down menu as far as working with exposure, shadow and highlights, levels and curves, this can get a lot done for you.